Hi guys! I was given a specific request to show you how to replace the hard drive on one of the first generation Intel iMacs. So this video goes out to Michael and Kalani. I hope you enjoy it. And um, I'm going to be using a 17 inch iMac today. Now the request came for a 20 inch iMac. Unfortunately I just couldn't scrounge one of those up, but the process is very similar. Now this poor 17 right here um, does not actually function. This was uh, in our recycling bin. So I'm going to show you the process to replace the drive, but unfortunately we're not going to get this guy working today. So the first thing that you want to do with this generation iMac is we're going to lay it face down. So I just want to make sure that it has a nice soft cloth to lie on while it's face down. And I'm going to get it going right there. Now on the bottom of this iMac, you'll notice that there are two screws for the RAM access, and those are the screws that you'd normally take out to just replace the RAM. I'm going to start by taking those out and taking the access panel off. So I'm going to grab my Phillips head driver here. And let's lean you down so you can watch this. Great. So that panel came right off. Now there are four screws on the bottom that are T8s, and we're going to take those off too. So it's one, two, three, and four. Now these three screws are all the same size, but it's important to remember that the screw that's right near the, um, let's see, that's the left side of the RAM bay, is a slightly longer screw. You want to make sure to put that back right where you found it, for obvious reasons. So I'm going to switch my bit here to the T8 and we'll take these four guys out that's my little dog whining in the background excuse him so now I stand the iMac up, and it's kind of funny, but you need um, what Apple calls the access tool, um, but actually all it is is a credit card. So get yourself a credit card that you don't mind banging up a little bit, and I'm going to find it. So you're going to take the card, and ideally you would kind of bend one end of it a little bit, and if you notice on the back slots here, you can physically put a card into the slot. What is going on is that there is a clip that unfortunately you can't see that is inside the rear bezel. Um, it's actually right on the underneath of this front bezel and the rear bezel clips into it. And we need to blindly loosen up those clips. So the way I do it is I take my card and I stick it in at an angle. And great, that released right there. And you know that it released because the end will actually pop forward. And now I go to the other side and again I go in at an angle. Great, and that popped right open as well. Now that does not always pop open that easily, and that's okay. Don't get frustrated with yourself. That right there is the most frustrating part of this entire process. So once you get that done, it should hopefully be smooth sailing from there. So I'm just going to tip this forward, and because we loosened up the bottom, it's going to open up in the bottom as well. And sometimes you just need to give it um, a little bit of finagling because there are these little RAM, see the little RAM slot holders there? They uh, need to be pushed in so that the bezel can come off smoothly. Nice. And once you get it off, you don't want to just yank it off because we've got a couple cables that are attached. Let's see if I can give you a view of that. There we go. We've got a couple cables on here. So I'm going to release these two cables. Now these are both for um, for the board that's on the front of this bezel. That was your camera connector and your mic cable that you just undid. So I'm going to take that front bezel and set it aside. And now I'm going to take my cloth and just move it aside as well. Because from here on in we're going to lay the iMac down on the foot. This guy's called the foot. Now. This is not one of my favorite parts of the design. So here is your second most difficult but really tedious step. The iMac has an EFI shield that um, a lot of us like to call a diaper. 
Uh, it is physically stuck at the bottom and these two little sides of the machine, and then it follows all the way up along the display assembly. You can see that this machine's been taken apart at some point in the past because it actually has cap tape now that's holding part of this shielding on. So what you want to do is get yourself your black stick and start on the bottom of the shielding and just kind of work your way down. Getting it started is often one of the hardest parts, but once you get it going, it usually goes okay. Now, a lot of you guys are going to get in here and you're going to rip this shield. It is not the end of the world if you rip it. You don't want to try to rip it, obviously, but if you do rip it, it's okay. Just try to put it back as smoothly as possible. And I'm just freeing up the sides here. And I'm going to free up the sides there. So this one flap is independent of the rest of the shielding. Once I have this one flap open, there are a couple cables in here that I'm going to set free before I move any further. Let's see if I can get you any of a better view here. Um, I'm recording, Ed. Thanks. <laughs> so there are um, two T6s here that hold the LVDS in place. I apologize that I can't get you a closer view. And we're gonna just detach the LVDS there. And then there's another cable here, this thicker black cable, this one right here. And I'm gonna undo that. That powers the inverter on the display. And now I'm gonna go ahead and release the shielding from around the display assembly itself. There we go. And it's always really important to be using, if you can't get one of these, I called it a black stick earlier, they're also called a nylon probe tool. Um, if you can't get one of these, make sure you're using something that's really soft and malleable plastic. Um, you don't want to be working near an LCD, especially prying glue off, if you're working with a sharp object. And even working with a nice soft object like this, I've got to be really careful not to nick the LCD, the panel here, when I'm going around. So now that I've got my shielding moved around, there are going to be four T10 screws that are along the side holding the LCD in place. And again, I wish I could show you a better view of these screws, but basically they're right in the four holes that you'll see as soon as you get the shielding lifted up. Great, and now that I've done that, I can go ahead and lift off my display assembly. And when you do this, there is another line of shielding that's in the back here. And usually it pulls off fairly easily, but you don't want to give it a lot of force. So in this case, it's not coming off very easily. So I'm just going to tap it a little. And there we go, it came off nice and smooth. Sometimes I cheat a little bit here, and instead of fully removing the display, what I do is I tip it backwards, and I make sure that there is something, just give you a better view here, I make sure that there is something behind it that I can lean it on that's soft and secure. In this particular instance, I'm actually going to fully remove the LCD, A, because it's really the right thing to do in the repair, and I like to show you guys the right thing to do, but I like to show you the little cheats too. Um, but I'm also doing it because we're actually going to be using this display in um, a customer's machine. We're selling it as a used part. So I'm going to go ahead and move that aside. 